at the start of our episodes, we do this little rambling session. Uh, and it's basically so that you guys can get to know us a little bit better because we've we showed you our journey from when we started on the Nullarbor, but we'd been traveling for about a year before that. So we shared that with you in the last few episodes mm -hmm. in our rambling sessions. And before that, we shared about how long we'd been planning the trip and what happened when COVID exploded, etc. Yeah. So we've had some questions. So we've had a lot of questions, but the question that keeps um, coming up is, what did you do before the trip mm. for a job? And you did? Well, I was, oh, well, I am star, um, yeah. the HR director for an IT company. Uh, so it's a global company um, and we have a presence in Australia and I manage a small HR team. So I'm not working at the moment. I'm on a sabbatical and they are just super flexible and amazing and look after their employees really well, that like mm. so many other employees should. Um, and Definitely. unfortunately don't, yeah. but they should. Uh, and I had been working for them for 15 years. And so I basically, you know, approached the person that I report to and said, I've been here for 15 years. Yep. I'm super committed. I, you know, have worked my butt off yep. for that time. And a lot of the time put the company before my family. Yep. Uh, and I said, look, we want to do this trip and I want to do it yeah and I'm still committed to the company and I'm going to come back at some point but something mm. that we really want to do so because of COVID I've actually yeah. gone back to them a few times and said hey can I extend my sabbatical and again they've been flexible so at this yeah. point we don't know when I'm going back to work we just mm. enjoying the trip yeah. uh, and they are, have been fantastic. So we've had a few people ask us, when is a good time to do the lap? And our opinion is, anytime. Just do it. All the time. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, it's hard to know when is a good time because you've got kids of different ages or... So many commitments. Yeah, you've got bills to pay. But I think if you can make it work, it's, Just, it'll be the best decision you, you can ever make. Yeah. And I think you take for granted, you're like, oh, I know how amazing Australia is. I yeah. know that there's Uluru and I know that there's, you know, the Great Barrier Reef. Yeah. But we have just been so shocked at just how much there is. Yeah. Like every bloody suburb you go to, there's something to see. And and we haven't actually seen the half of it. We've just scratched yeah. the surface. Like, there's so much to see in this country. There's mm. so many places that we haven't been, but the places that we have yeah. been have been amazing. It's like, yeah, what a great country to, to travel. Oh, yeah. Ridiculously good. Yeah. And the ages of people on the road, like, you know, there's single people, there's couples, there's yeah. families that have got, like, six people. Yeah. Family, families in buses, people with... Pets. People in tents, people but, in yeah. everything. Yeah. People with like newborn babies. Yeah. People with kids who were in high school. Yeah. But you, you just adapt and you just make it happen, I think. Yeah. That's... Just back yourself and do it. Yeah. All right. Okay, so that's the end of that rambling. That was yeah. a bit deep. Uh, so enjoy the episode and that's it. Yep. Cheers. Enjoy. Capital Vic, we're on our way. Yep. So before we start heading, after we've done the tyres, it's always a good idea to stop and have a look at, you know, the information that they have up here. So we've got here all of the different campsites and roads you can go on and good news, it's all open, fantastic. And then over here there's heaps of information about the different campsites. It actually says it takes about three and a half hours to get the whole way up to the top of Cape Levesque. That's more than I expected, so it was good we stopped and had a look at that. Uh, and it's always a good idea as well to take a photo. So I took a photo of that just before, so that when we get up in there, we've got that to refer back to. We don't have to worry about whether we've got internet or whatever to look things up. We've just got that on our phones. So, good idea to do that. All right, a few roadworks, but hopefully they're not too bad. Let's do this! Let's do it! Woo! Yeah! Well, anyway. Doing this all looks 
very tight and tricky and read reviews and they're all saying about people getting bogged a lot with just cars. So. Decisions, decisions. You just want to get this really crazy. <laughs> Why do you care, man? No, it's just that I just I was just like, okay, let's go do it, and oh. then you said, let's go to Willy Creek. Just gonna have a little look see up here before we take the van up. See what we're dealing with. Ooh. Pretty narrow. What do you reckon? So we've decided we're gonna go to Willy Creek, which is I think still interesting to get into. But that one it was just too tight, we're not even sure we could get through it. Is that the one you saw in? No. I saw one by itself. But it's a similar horse to that one. Ooh. Baby. Oh my gosh. I'll tell you what, this is definitely made for people with a rooftop tent or a camper trailer. It's not for caravans. We have not seen any other caravan. Heaps of cars. And those parts back there because it's mainly just one track so you would like slip in, slip in, slip in the side to, to let them go past but it's a bit hard when you've got a massive caravan on so we just had like five cars have to manoeuvre for us to get past and going what are these idiots doing bringing that van in here? Mm. <laughs> Very silly weren't we? Sorry guys that was us. On wiki camps they call this little part up here the car killer section. So you can uh, go straight through the mud flats, or you can turn right, which we're gonna do. Turn right. They're like, save your car and go right. So you have to go that right through those red lines. Holy dooly, this is paid off. Correct decision. Cracker spot. Good spot. Beautiful. And free. Yay! Free. No more, no dollars. No dollars. Amazing. And for lunch, we've got some sandwiches. Mm -hmm. Salmon. Salmon. Salmon avocado. Mm -hmm. But we, but Ava and me have to get you. Tayos, some veggies, some nuts. Pretty stock standard. Yeah. Simple. Good. Think that there'd be turtles in there if there were crocs. What would you rather be? I'd rather be. Yeah. He's coming up again. Turtle. Turtle? Yeah. Why? They're more beautiful. I think I'd be a croc. More chance of surviving than a turtle. I think I'd be a croc as well. And did you know? That um, talking about feathers on animals, well, this is dinosaurs, but um, Tyrannosaurus rex's babies are most likely to have feathers, and Tyrannosaurus rex, the actual adult, is most likely to have feathers too. Really? Uh huh. Wow. <laughs> How do you know that? From the book, my dinosaur book. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Love that sound. Sweet sound. Hold on, I'll do it again. You ready for it? Oh yeah. Too far. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Cheers. Boom. Well, I just live in Willie Creek and it was a belter of a, a free camp that we stumbled upon. Absolutely loved it. Great spot to relax and just watch the sun go down. We just sat there, we just got the chairs out, Danny cooked a barbie and just had some beers and we just watched the fishermen and we just had a laugh and we'll look at all their different techniques and it's just really relaxing. Yeah, just sit there and do nothing. Don't yeah. have to worry about seeing something or the sight was right in front of us. Mm. So we didn't have to move. It's good. Because quite often like people assume for this type of thing it's just like a, a a holiday the whole time and yeah it's a holiday but you're constantly doing stuff it's very rare that it's like we're just going to sit down have a beer and just watch the world go by and we were able to do that there yeah. loved it we should do it more often mm. we should that's where we were going to go but i don't know if you can see there's a bushfire so we're gonna change our plan yeah we're not gonna play with that are we Got here just on Sunset, Sunset. Park. And now we're gonna have a little look at it. And Danny's already rushed off down to the point.
prime position right there, my friends. There's only like, I don't know, five of those spots may be available and the rest are not great spots, but you know, whatever. You can, they do keep this area here for people to sit and look at the sunset, which is nice. Now, for this walk, we need our shoes on. No thongs because there are heaps of um, oh, oyster sharpie stuff down here and you will scratch your feet. You do not want to do that. Oh, it's interesting walking. I think I'm gonna have to turn the GoPro, for, GoPro off so I can concentrate. I'm actually stepping here. I can about there. Expect. I think I expected more like um, red cliffs and white beaches and yeah, yeah but it's I, a bit mangrovey here. Yeah, I expected it way more <clears throat> like Cape Range National Park. Yeah, That's I what think, I expected but I, with more red in it. I think tomorrow we'll, we'll find that. Hopefully. On the other side. This is still pretty but it's, yeah. It's nowhere near what I expected. And also, um, I think, yeah, further south in this peninsula was prettier like the yeah. first one that we went to yeah willie creek was way prettier i think Penda bay will be pretty hopefully yeah this is nice oh. mm -hmm. yeah, sitting high marks you know yeah yeah it's <laughs> probably pretty good. are probably are pretty nice. spoiled these days aren't we yeah. after seeing pretty much everything that australia has to offer so we've got high standards there mm. yeah, yeah. Pull, pull your head in eh? jeez yeah I just want to keep it real. I don't want to Landscapes. say, oh, it's Landscapes amazing. And, snob, then, you? and then you come and go, they were full of shit. <laughs> Basically. these things right they are everywhere and they look so disgusting but they are all over these rocks it's like that and these oyster shells so it's not very nice to walk across but anyway it's interesting we're just back inside but then I realized the sky is popping now so I'm gonna take you back out show you the sky now it's amazing I'll tell you what outside our window actually I'll show you that oh no I can't show you that now because I closed it anyway outside our window looks amazing but I'll show you here oh my gosh I bet Danny got some really good photos finishing um, packing up we're gonna head to Penda Bay We've got a booking there for the overflow just on our way out but before we head off I just thought I'd show you up here so this is the top of the campsite and then there's just toilets here two um two toilets and two showers for boys and girls that's it we're leaving Gumbanyan and we're on our way to Penda Bay looks pretty good does it got me um thinking about Toilets. Really? <laughs> yeah. Just because we can't find any dump points the whole way up here. So pretty much this whole 200 Ks, there's no dump points. So I think we did it a smart way, not intentionally, but it worked. In that the first stops that we stayed at, there were no toilets on site, so we could use our own toilet. And then the last spots that we've stayed, there's been toilets there, so it doesn't matter that our toilet's full. So, you know, if you are planning intentionally, that might be the way to go. Start off with ones that you can use your own toilet yeah. and then use, or you can do it the other way, but just make sure no one uses your toilet for those ones when you do go to the free camps and you've got your toilet full. Yeah. Or you can get two containers, but then, yeah. you're, then you're just storing your waste on yeah. board. But... It's a good idea though. Um, I've heard of people who do that. Yeah. I thought, yeah, that's a good idea. 
we're set up for the moment. Hopefully there's a cancellation or something so we can get one, down to one of the better campsites for tomorrow night. But for now, we're going to the beach. This is a lot more what we thought like up at Cape Levesque would be. In here it's really beautiful. So behind there was that beach we've just come from. But then what about this one? Oh Wowzers. Nature's pebble creek. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> totally. I reckon 10 o'clock would be perfect for the sun hitting it. And not the side. Yeah. Is that for me, mate? Hmm? Is that for me? Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Get married again, mate. Alright, here's the deal. We are going to stay in our site for tonight because there's been no cancellations or anything. But there might be cancellations tomorrow so we might then be able to move to one of the primo sites. And in the meantime, our friends are here and they've got a really good spot. So we're going to go down and have a campfire at their site. We're going to look out over the sunset, enjoy the fire, have some drinks. Of course we're going to do some Jaffa Lion for dinner because that's what we do. And that's it. So on my way there. Danny and the kids are already down there. I'm just bringing the mints and pastry along, and hopefully, the sun will still be setting when I get there. What about that for a spot, hey? Bad. Jeez. A couple of whales out there, too. Somewhere. Bloody hell. Cracking spot. See, these are the advantages you get when you have a camper trailer. An off road. An off-road uh, camper trailer setup. <laughs> Car caravan. We don't need one. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We can just hang out with these guys and get spots like this. Don't have to worry about the fire either. <laughs> so one of our friends, Matt, uh, who doesn't like to sit still clearly <laughs> and likes building things, decided this morning that they needed a path down to the beach, so built that. <laughs> Would you like him to come and stay at your caravan park or your free camp? <laughs> Absolutely, it's a bloody good guest, isn't it? <laughs> Pills are for the pastry. I love Because <laughs> the outside, inside was too hot. How did a Batman's mum call him for dinner? Yeah. Dinner, 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 Batman! <laughs> Great news! They found a better spot for us, so we're going to stay for two more nights in the good spot, um, B6, which just means you've got a view over the beach. Ah, so excited! So we're moving there now. Danny's going to ride his bike down. I'm going to drive down, reset up, and off we go. Winning. Are you ready for this? Here we go. Here it is. Whoa, ho, ho, ho. What a spot. Can we just stay here for like two weeks? Yeah, Please. We can. Just book in, eh?
story. This is the second book out of the series. There's going to be nine books. Um, I'm thinking about doing ten chapters, maybe, and I'm up to uh, the fifth chapter. I've only just started writing it. Just to give you a quick rundown on the places, there'd be about 40 sites, I reckon, and of those, probably 30 are really good ones. Uh, there are two beaches, and they, the tide comes in enough that you can see, like it's clear enough water that you can see if something's going to be approaching, but you know, you're not going to come in here and be out in the water all day. You'd like jumping in, cooling off, and then getting back onto the sand. Um, there was a croc sighting here back uh, about three months ago. And then our site is just up there above those guys. Maze balls. Cheers. Mm. <laughs> Pretty good. We've already gone up and rebooked for another night. So it'll Why be not? four nights. Because these are the kind of spots that are just meant. And when you get there, you just grab it and go, yep, we're staying here. Now you're the fire, you're the flare, you're the song inside me. There's some rock pools around here that are supposed to be awesome. Okay, so 850 meter walk. They say do it when the tide is out or leave two hours before the tide is out. Just got to be low tide so you can get around. Uh -huh. Because the tides are so big up here, like it's five, six metre difference between low and high tide. So you get to time it, otherwise you'll be, you get wet. Time the tides and their rocks have heaps of oyster shells on them. So they said, make sure you're wearing good shoes or coral reef shoes or whatever they're called. This track is crazy. This is ridiculously slippery. Like you put your foot down and it just slides from out from underneath you. You have to be so careful. That's why I haven't taken any footage, I'm stopping. And then I'm going to go again. You have to be so careful. I can see how people would get really injured here. I thought coming up to this gap, maybe we were through. I don't know. I haven't looked over there yet. Here's hoping that we see something. Here's the gap. What do we got? Ninja Warrior. So this is it. What a spot worth the effort. Like the colours here are just off the charts. Oranges and yellows and against the sky it's beautiful yeah really good it was tough though getting here very very slippery rocks looking up for those black ones i almost stacked it yeah had to have one kid per adult holding their hand and helping them along but we've seen it now we're gonna get back before it gets dark because we've only got probably 20 minutes of sun yeah light. and you do not want to be walking back there in the dark yeah so we're gonna check out this last cave but we can't take you guys in there i think you're not allowed to do any footage in there and then head out of here yeah, let's get back safely, eh? I can hear music grow louder Top going down while we're riding Nothing like us, babe We be glorious Looking real pretty like Kylie We bring commotion, no hiding No one like us, babe We are glorious So bang on the door
genuinely sad this morning because I really do not want to leave this place. Like, look. Can we stay here? No. Another few days. I was saying last night about, you know, the top 10 campsites or beaches and that this was up there, but I was reflecting on it last night in bed and I'm thinking top three. Top three, close to top one. Here in Lucky Bay and near Esperance. Yeah. Can't think of any anything that would beat it. The only thing is it's so remote, which is a good and a bad thing. Mm. But apart from that, perfect. Yeah. I but I don't know whether it's one of those things, you know, the things that are freshest in your mind you like the most. I don't know. I don't think it's that. Could be. You know it's a good spot when you're trying to find excuses to not pack up and not leave. Yeah. But we yeah. do have to pack up. I know. We have extent we were already gonna be here one night, was it? Two nights? Two nights and we've been here four. Four, uh, yeah. And we the only reason we have to go is because we have to get to the gib. And we've got a booking at El Questro that we need to get to. Bloody bookings. Mm. You could easily spend a week here. Yeah. So if you book book a oceanfront campsite for a week. Mm -hmm. And then just enjoy, relax, unwind. It's one of those. It's not like a do-do-do, see everything. It is a chill out. Yeah. So we hope you guys enjoyed it as much as we did. If you did, feel free to like, subscribe, comment below, let us know what you think. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. See you on the gibbs.